No. No. No, 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 no. This is not my problem. Ah, bollocks. Exorcist, demonologist, master of the dark arts, and definitely not the kind of magician you'd hire for your kid's birthday party. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be exploring the comic book origins of John Constantine. As with most comic book characters, there are often reimaginings and different versions to a character's past. We have chosen to primarily focus on the first 12 issues of Hellblazer, along with 1991's Hellblazer number 39 and the New 52's 2015's Secret Origins number 11. John Constantine, aka the Hellblazer, is not only a working class musician and con man, but also a detective who specializes in the occult. Say hi to his satanic majesty. Yeah, me! Even though he's adept at casting spells, John proves his resilience by relying more on his supernatural knowledge, quick wit, and ability to manipulate friend or foe to his benefit. John's first official debut was in 1985's Swamp Thing number 37. Appearing as a young man with a shock of blonde hair, tan trench coat, and chain smoking like it's nobody's business. What's in that trench coat? I am. This anti hero was created by Alan Moore and designed by artists Steve Bissett and John Totalben, who were visually inspired by singer songwriter Sting. When Constantine was initially introduced, his past was a mystery. This changed when Jamie Delano fleshed out the character in the 1998 Hellblazer series, giving us John Constantine's haunting upbringing. Whoever you are, I'm a nasty piece of work. Ask anybody! Born in Liverpool on May 10, 1953, his mother, Mary Ann, died giving birth to John and his stillborn twin brother. As it turns out, the womb had been weakened as the result of a previous abortion attempt done against the mother's wishes by John's father, Thomas. It was also revealed that while in the womb, John strangled his twin with his own umbilical cord. This dead twin became known as the Golden Boy, and thanks to the miracle of plot twists, would make additional appearances in future issues and in an alternate universe. The Golden Boy is a powerful magician and the exact opposite of John, but that's a story for another day. During his adolescence, John traveled around the world, participated in various occult circles, and formed a punk band called Mucus Membrane. Well, back in Jurassic times, I fronted a punk band called Mucus Membrane. Yeah, that's right. I wasn't always an upstanding warlock. Bernier produced our first and only record. While on tour, John came across the result of a magical orgy gone wrong at a club in Newcastle. An abused girl named Astra had summoned a demon that exacted revenge on her tormentors. However, the demon refused to leave, and John devised a plan with fellow occultist friends to conjure another demon, known as Nergal, that would destroy the threat. John's recklessness and failure to control Nergal resulted in Astra being dragged to hell, her soul forever damned. Oops. Her name was Astra, and I can handle her death. It's her damnation that's eating me alive. Dragged to hell. John, it's time to face the truth. Nine years old and suffering for all eternity. The only one suffering here is you. That's on me, man. There are no demons. Why do you keep telling me? The event in Newcastle remains a festering wound for John, compounded with the ghosts of his friends that haunt him, constantly reminding him of the failings that weigh heavily on his psyche. As if the man isn't plagued enough, he encounters Nergal once again while he's hospitalized, and is forced to make a deal with him, a deal which includes getting his blood tainted by the demon. John's abilities didn't emerge from just dabbling with the occult, but from his bloodline and ancestors who were skilled in the art of magic. This bloodline is known as the Laughing Magicians, and spans across all of mankind's history, bestowing special gifts on those who carry it. In John's case, luck is tipped in his favor and increases his chance of success. Because of this, John can easily escape and evade opponents, protect himself from harmful spells and weapons, and can be at the right place at the right time. It's safe to say that John Constantine is one lucky yet miserable bastard. Despite the advantageous perk, John's a walking bad omen, bringing misfortune and death to whoever crosses his path, especially his friends. In DC's New 52 reboot, John's origin alters, providing a preview of the Hellblazer before he'd earned his moniker. In 2014's Constantine No. 14, John's childhood was instead set in the 80s, and as a young boy, he was taught his first magic spell by a sorcerer named Tanarak. The sorcerer sort of failed to warn Constantine that the cost of such a gift was the lives of his parents and the destruction of his home. Oops again. John Constantine's origin was again retconned in 2015's Secret Origins 11, when a magical creature named Legend Breaker is summoned by a group of kids who inquire about Constantine's true origin. The creature offers three diverging narratives, each one offering a completely different version of how John came to be the man he is today. The one consistency is that each story ends with the death of his family and places John on a path towards magic. In the most unnameable of devourers, you guardeth the golden gateway. 
John Constantine has appeared in both the big and small screens throughout the years. In 2005, the movie Constantine was released with Keanu Reeves, cast as the occult detective. Reeves, of course, is also supernaturally ageless. Don't worry. <coughs> Happens to everyone the first time. It's a sulfur. Reeves' portrayal of the character was even darker than in the comics, and the film took many liberties with the character. Constantine the TV series aired in 2014 and breathed new life into the character while also sticking closer to the source material. Despite the show's faithful interpretation of John's world and Matt Ryan's impressive performance, the show was cancelled after the first season. I've got a better plan. In what could have been described as a small miracle, Matt Ryan reprised his role for a guest appearance in season 4 of CW's Arrow. Apologies, I didn't have time to translate that from its original Aramaic. You know, if I knew you were surrounded by so many pretty girls, Oliver, I would have stopped by sooner. John Constantine has been outwitting foes, defying fate, and musing in dark corners for over 30 years, yet his appeal hasn't waned. He's troubled and incredibly flawed, but always finds a way to stay relevant and consistently present in the DC universe. I think we should do what she says. All right, but we don't have to just jump when she says it. Okay, that's long enough. Let's go. Are you a fan of the Hellblazer? Well, aren't you a regular little clever clogs? For more haunting videos published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Go on, get out! Is there any way to greet a mate?